Hey guys, uh, Zach here, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about this guitar that I 3D printed over here, and uh, I'll do a little bit of montage of the build. Now, I did this earlier, I'm kind of starting towards the beginning of the year, and I finished it sometime in kind of June, um, but I didn't have, uh, I, I filmed some stuff and then I kind of sat on the footage and I had hours and hours of footage to go through. And in the end, I decided to just kind of speed up a bunch of the building footage because I was thinking I was taking all this great footage and in reality it turned out to be six hours of stuff that no one would ever watch. So that's okay. Um, so enjoy this video of me building my guitar. Um, and uh, yeah, let me just give a brief introduction to what this is before we start looking at the build footage. So this is a, this is basically based on the Prusa caster or design made by Joseph Prusa, um, the um, guy who runs Prusa Research. Um, they build 3D printers on like the Prusa Mark III um, and Prusa Mini, and now the Mark IV actually just came out. And I did print some parts like the knobs. I think some of these knobs were printed on the Prusa. Um, but the other parts were printed on my Ender 3 version 2 um, as well. So, yeah, I'm kind of into 3D printing as well as uh, guitars and stuff. So, but anyway, yeah, I mean, this thing's pretty dope. Um, this is the finished product. And uh, I just took the neck off of my kind of parts caster telly. And same with the bridge and the electronics. Um, stole those from my parts caster telly. And uh, yeah, I did a few modifications to the design. I added um, integrated strap buttons here um, and down there, of course. Um, I designed a different control plate with that was has kind of, you know, uh, triangulated off ends as opposed to the standard kind of uh, one with the kind of dome at the end. I designed my own little isosahedron uh, knob um, and then uh, these kind of hexagonal knobs with little chamfers on them. I'm, I'm pretty proud of those. Had a lot of fun designing those. I modified the pit guard to have kind of sharper edges, especially around these corners. Um, so they have kind of a chamfered edge instead of a filleted or rounded edge. And then I added these um, hexagonal holes here to kind of just kind of spice up the design and give, you know, kind of tie in with the hexagonal theme over here. And I like doing it in um, two colors as opposed to three or four because it just looks a little less busy. Um, I could, of course, done it in, uh, I could, of course, printed it in different colors. I kind of wanted to do orange, but I thought white and black might be a little classier. Um, and I think in the end, it, it, it does turn out, it turned out pretty darn good from far away. But um, if you get up close, you can kind of see that some of the tolerances aren't great. I didn't end up using the screw holes. Um, and uh, the biggest issue really is the neck pocket. I forgot to, I didn't think to check the location of the neck bolt holes. I thought they would be the same. Um, and so, uh, but Joseph Prusa must have used, used a different neck um, from this Toman Telecaster kit. And you can see that there's a bit of a gap there. I've actually filled it with this piece of plastic that I printed out. But um, yeah, one thing that's interesting is just that the, uh, yeah, the, the holes were in a different spot. So the neck he used had a longer heel uh, than, than the fender one. So. I'm going to modify the design. It's basically just a three millimeter shift. Um, the holes need to move three millimeters down. So I may print, end up printing another one to see if I can get it to be more stable, but it definitely bends. There's quite a bit of deflection of the body under the tension of the strings. I put nines on it, which helps a little bit, but it still can go, you can still pull it out of tune very easily just by resting your arm on the guitar or not. So depending on what you do when you're playing, um, either you rest your arm on the guitar, the whole time or none of the time and tune it in the position that you want to tune it in. So yeah, um, I think I also widened this gap around the neck pickup to help it fit uh, a little bit better. And uh, let me show you the back of the guitar as well, if I can get it here. So yeah, the, I did, there is a bit of glue residue and it's hard to make the different pieces kind of look cohesive. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, all in all, I, I think it, it turned out pretty decent and it hasn't exploded yet. Um, I had heavier gauge strings, 10 to 52s on here and they did hold up. I do love this jack plate, um, even though it was a bit of a pain to print. Um, it does look pretty spectacular and I love the kind of black and white theme. I also printed a one degree neck shim that I found online. Um, it's kind of hard to see in there, but uh, that was crucial for getting the guitar to um, be able to set up, be set up with a, any kind of reasonable action. So, 
enjoy the build montage and uh, I'll see you at the end of the video. Bye.
moment of truth. If this doesn't fit, all of my work will be have been done in vain. And that's not good because I'm already seeing that due to the position of the holes, I have a huge gap here. So, okay, it does fit into the pocket. The pocket is insanely loose, so that's not good. Um, but at least it fits, so I may have to add some kind of spacers here. You can't really see it on camera, but...
Okay, uh, thanks for watching this video. Um, there's a bit of playing um, that I'm gonna do of the guitar. Um, hope you enjoy it. Um, and uh, yeah, I've got, I'm, I've been working on another guitar. You can see some pieces of it over there uh, that I have yet to finish. So once I finish that, I'll do a video of that one as well, let you know how it goes. Hopefully, um, I already know the neck pockets a lot better on this next design, and I did more of the design work of that. So I'm very excited for what that is. Uh, so stay tuned for more videos and uh, subscribe, uh, like, comment, let me know what you think of this guitar. Do you think I did a good job? What could I have done better aside from the, the all the stuff I admitted to already? Um, and let me know uh, what you think of it. I'm going to put the files up online once I fix the neck pocket issue. And um, I'll host all of the files somewhere in GrabCAD, I think. And I'll put a GrabCAD link down below. So uh, once this video is live, the GrabCAD will be up there as well. So you can download them as step files, SolidWorks files, and X. Uh, you know, I, maybe I'll even do Rhino files as well. So let me know if you want to see other file formats uh, for the guitar. If you want to print it yourself, um, I'll have high quality STL files there as well. The ones I actually use for printing aside from, you know, the ones that needs to be fixed. Um, I think that my improvements of the Prusa Caster design are pretty good. The only thing is that neck pocket, it should be tightened up a little bit, um, but it's kind of hard to do. So yeah, uh, that's, that's definitely one of the big issues. This is another thing I forgot to show is just this, uh, you know, the saddles, I'm having to push them over pretty hard to keep the strings kind of aligned in the neck pocket. So I may, what I may end up doing is loosening the strings and loosening the neck bolt and kind of twisting the neck back and forth until I get a good angle and then retightening the neck bolts. I think that would be something that would improve but improve it. I may have to uh, kind of hog out the, the neck bolt holes a little bit to give me a little bit more wiggle room to kind of align it. But I don't know, honestly, it, you know, it's a crappy, <laughs> it is what it is. It's kind of just a, a fun, crappy project. It's not, you know, a world-class guitar that I'm gonna sell. It's just a fun thing that I have that I can say, hey, I made that and it's pretty cool looking, so. All right, catch y'all in the next one. Thanks, bye.